Well, hey everybody, Jeff Williams here with SJViews.com. <laughs> Hold on while I turn this off so I don't blind you. What are we doing today? Well, today I'm reading one of my favorite magazines. ICMJ, and it's got Chris Ralph in it. I had a couple of y'all down out there said that you wanted to know how we got started on this mine. Like a three-dimensional model, if you will, of where we started and how we figured out where everything was at, why we started digging where we were at, and of course, where we're at today. And then later on, I got a big surprise for you. So you're going to want to stick around to the end of the video for this one, boy. So you know what I'm going to say, huh? Ooh, you better! So come on, let's go! If this is your first time here and you haven't subscribed yet, I'm going to give you a good reason why you should. Not only are we going to teach you how to find gold on your own, but once we reach 200,000 subscribers, we're giving away 200 bags of pay dirt. But you got to be an active subscriber. So go ahead and subscribe now and don't forget to hit the bell icon. That way you can be notified when we make more videos and when we hand out those 200 bags of pay dirt. Uh, Alright, let's start from the beginning, shall we? Uh, uh, all right, let me turn this off so I don't blind you. A few years ago, we sunk this shaft that we're in right now. We're about 20 vertical feet down, and it's in all this nasty caliche, as you can see, and you know that. The question I get asked most is, why did you decide to sink a shaft here, and how long did it take you? Now, why we initially sunk this shaft here was for two reasons. One, we did years of research on the area, and then we did a lot of sampling, about maybe a year worth of sampling. And we saw that there was other diggings in the area, especially Chinese tunnels. And so we decided that what we were going to do is we were going to triangulate where the Chinese tunnels were and then get in the middle and possibly hit a rich deposit in between. We noticed that in those Chinese tunnels, most of the good pay layers were anywhere from 20 to 40 vertical feet down. So we thought we'd start at 20 feet and work our way from there and try to hit the pay layers. We got down about 20 feet and we started seeing small signs of gold in these clay seams that you see here. And we knew we were on the first of the pay layers. So we decided that we were going to drift along and then try to go deeper to get into the richer pay layers. Now you can see some of the layers here. We started encountering this red zone here. See that? Right along here. And then below it was what? This clay zone. This nice rich clay zone. And we started finding little pieces of gold inside of this clay seam. That's when we knew we were on a winner. So we continued to drift this direction. The gold slowly got bigger, but it wasn't enough to keep us happy. As we were drifting, we noticed that the clay seam here was dipping at about a 15 degree dip. So we followed it. And what happened was, is it widened out over here. And so we started to chase it down at that same 15 degree dip. As we followed that clay seam along, we decided this would be a good point right here to chase that 15 degree dip down. And that's what we did. There's that clay seam. See it traveling at a 15 degree dip, like I told you? So we chased it all the way down. Now, like I said, there are small pieces of gold in there, but it's nothing to really make it profitable. So we figured we'll just keep chasing it down. Remember what I told you. In the old Chinese diggings, the good pay layers were in between 20 to 40 feet, vertical depth from the surface. So we knew from here, another 20 feet, there has to be some really rich seams. Ooh, then we chased it down into here. You want to know what we found in here, boy? <laughs> we started to dip about 15 to 20 degrees, came down about 30 feet down this incline, and then we started hitting this. This is a very unusual gravel zone that's sitting underneath the clay zone. Now, when we were up there on our initial drift, we didn't see this gravel zone. We looked for it, but we didn't see it. We did notice it when we were in the Chinese diggings, but we didn't see it back in the shaft. See that? All that round gravel in there, and it's cemented in there hard. And then we were finding more gold in this, more than up here in this clay seam. So we started following this. Here's a good example right here. You can see this big round river rock here in the wall. You see that right there? Right there. Now, underneath this is another clay zone. You see that right there? And there was a little bit of gold in it, but not as much as this area right here. So we decided to follow it in. As we followed that gravel zone in, tied us in with this cave system right here. And this is the infamous cave system that we think ties to cocoa weave. We follow this thing in, and it twists and it turns and it gets really tight. I mean, really tight. And we spent a lot of work trying to chisel through it. But when we get punched through, I'm going to take you in there and show you what's in there. I think you're going to find it amazing. I got worm people living in there, boy. Worm people. And I got fossils in there too, which is kind of bizarre. Now, of course, as you look around, you can see remnants of the cave system everywhere in here, all throughout here. This zone right here was producing the most gold, so we punched in this direction. 
which is what? Right on top of that cave system. This is where we started hitting the big gold. It was in that little sand pocket right up in there inside of this super, super hard caliche. And this is where we've been finding the majority of the gold is in this pocket here. You can see these cemented gravels in here. Now the gold that's coming out of here is extremely large and I wouldn't be a bit surprised to see five ounces come out of here. We pulled one ounce out, now I'm waiting for the five ounce. It's extremely rich and there's a lot of quartz locked up in it, which means that the source, whatever the source was, is not far from this pocket. See how the dirt on the floor is red as compared to the surrounding gray caliche, the hard packed cemented gravels. Look at that. You can see where the worm people are trying to dig their way out. See that? All these scratch marks. Now we were removing so much material out of here, we had to install a slusher. That way it'd make it easier to get it up to that transfer point, and that would automatically load it into the five gallon buckets. People always ask me, Jeff, how hot is it down there? What's the temperature like? About 79 degrees down here. But because there's so many clay seams down here, they've got moisture inside of them, which makes it very humid down here. I'm sweating like a stuffed pig on Thanksgiving. So all in all, we're about close to 40 vertical feet down when you get all the way back to that cave system. You know about last year sometime, we started pushing this drift in right here. Now there's a, a reason for us doing this. Actually, there's a few reasons. And I gotta tell you, this is some of the hardest caliche we've had to go through so far. We literally had to drill and blast our way through. This is the only pocket of hard caliche that we hit. And then it got really soft. In fact, it got too soft. It got so soft we had to put in timbering and shore it up. The reason why we're going in this direction is we're trying to get it around to the other side of the channel. And based on our sampling up on the surface and looking at where the Chinese diggings are, we figured we'd come up around there and there's some rich ground in that area too. Now the downside to putting in this transfer point was that we had to put the drift up about three to four feet, which brought us above the pay layers. And we didn't like that, but it was necessary because we had to have a transfer point. This is a lot easier than trying to fill five gallon buckets and put it onto a cart. After we drove this drift in about 25, 30 feet, we started putting an incline in to get back to that 20 foot mark. Now right about here, the ground started to get really soft. I mean, softer than normal. It was like a fine sand almost, but it had a clay texture to it. And then we noticed there was a lot of water in it too. So as we started to go down an incline, it got softer and there was more precipitation in it, more water, more humidity. And so we decided to shore it up. Well, if you can look in there, you can see that there's just water everywhere in there. See all the water on the timbers? See that? water everywhere. It's collecting on my vent pipes, on my electrical. I'm a little bit worried about that. It's all over the timbers. We got back down to our 20 foot mark and you can see the gravels here in the sides of the ribs. And then we started hitting that red clay and then I got a gravel zone down here that's got fine gold in it and I'm going to show you that here in a minute. So what we need to do is keep going down to get down to that richer gravel zone that's right below this one like I showed you in the other drift. See that? Nasty red clay zone right there. And then right above it here, see that gravel zone? You see all that gravel in there? There's fine gold in that. There's a little bit of gold in this guy, but not a lot. I suspect that the better gold is gonna be down here. All right, now remember in the beginning of the video, I told you I had a surprise for you. Well, actually I've got two surprises for you. And you're gonna like it a lot, boy. The first surprise, is that I'm gonna bring a pan and tub down here and then we're gonna pan out this gravel zone together and see what's in it. And if there's anything in it, we'll bring in the VLFs and then start scouring. I don't think there's any nuggets in it, but we have been finding finds in it. And then I'm gonna show you what we pulled out of that pocket recently. Ooh, I bet you can't wait to see that, huh boy? So you know what I'm gonna say, huh? You know what I'm gonna say, you better boy. So come on, let's go! So I got my pan and tub down here. I got my gold pan down here. I got a five gallons of water. And of course I got my jet dry down here. You gotta have jet dry. So we're gonna sample this, this layer right here and see if there's anything in it. So hold on while I whip this out. Yeah, look at that boy. You want to take a bath? Huh? I put jet dry in my water for the fines. Take my gloves out. Should have enough room to do this. Let's see if I can move this pan back a little bit. This tub. Level it out some. 
Alright, let's see what we got. So we're gonna pull out this layer and pan it real quick. See if there's anything in it. Sound good to you? Just that top layer right there, you see that? Right there, you see that? You see it, boy? All right, I got this much material. Let's pan it out and see what we got. You gotta break all that clay up. Yeah, I'm loving that. It's like soup. Should have classified. See all the heavies in there? Wow, look at all those heavies. That's just caliche right there. See that? See all those heavies in there? Look at that. All that gravel. Yeah, I should have classified. Dang it. Nothing but heavies in there. I gotta go slow in case there's any finds in there. Alright, let's see what we got, boy. Get my glasses on so I can see. Ooh, there's a piece right there. Ooh, and there's some finds right there. Look at that. Look at that, boy. Some black sand right there. I don't know if you can see it. I'll point it out to you. I got a really large flake right there. I got a little tiny piece right there. I got a little piece right there. A little piece right there. And I think that's a piece right there. Yeah, that's a piece right there. Hold on, let me get it together. Do my Alabama bump. Get those heavies out of the way. Oh yeah, look at that. All right, I'll zoom in so you can see that. All right. So I got... I got one right there. See that? That's a nice flake right there, a nice chunk. Then I got a little tiny one right next to it. Right there. And then I got these little tiny ones over here. You see that? These right here. There's one there. Little tiny, tiny one there. Another one there. And then that giant flake right there. And then a little tiny one right about there. You see that? You see it, boy? Ooh! That makes me do the happy dance. Woo! Yeah! Ooh, remember I told you I had two surprises for you? That's one. The other one's over there. Come with me, boy, if you dare. Don't say nothing, just drop those pants. Ooh. Ooh, what did I want to show you? Come here, boy. I'm going to show you something you ain't never seen before. Reach in there, boy. Dig deep. Oh, yeah. Ooh, feels good, boy. Get on in there, boy, and get some. <laughs> what did you think I was going to show you, huh? It's the only place I can keep my nuggets without Slim poking around in there. All right, now these nuggets came out of that pocket over there. We hit about maybe six, seven nuggets. And we're going to be giving those away too, so keep your pants on. But I want you to get a good look at them. So get in here, boy, and take a look at them. Yeah. Look at that, boy. That one's got quartz on it. You see that? You see it, boy? Those are some nice-looking nuggets, if you ask me. Oh, yeah, look at that. Mmm. 
Just like mama used to make. That's some nice looking nuggets right there. Ooh, let's weigh him up and see what they weigh. Let's tear him out, make sure he's at zero. There we go, we got zero. Oh yeah. Oh. 11.91. Not shabby, about 12 grams of gold. Ooh, with quartz too. Oh, you gotta love that. Mm -mm -mm. Ooh, and with gold pushing $2,000 an ounce. Ooh, that'd make anybody happy. Can't you just taste them? I bet you just can't eat one, huh? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, look at that boy. Handful of nuggets, yeah. Let's look at them cleaned up. Get on in there, boy, and get some of that juiciness. Ooh, yeah. Just like mama used to make, mm, mm, mm. Yeah, juicy. Did you see all those juicy nuggets, boy? Mm, did you? And of course, we're gonna be giving those nuggets away with anything else we find down here in both drifts and from that cave system. Now you're probably asking yourself, Jeff, what the heck, have you lost your mind? Probably so. But that's just our way of saying thank you to all our premium patrons. It's our way of saying thank you for helping us keep the dream alive. Because we couldn't have done any of this without their support, and that's the truth. But they also get to go on three-day gold mining trips with us, and they have access to get our book, Where to Find Gold. Over 40 years experience packed into that thing. It's got great graphics too, and extreme details on geology. That way anybody can find gold. Also, you have access to t-shirts too. And we also have a treasure hunt going on. Yeah, we have a treasure hunt. Me and Slim packed a whole bunch of Silver Morgans, silver bars and a gold bar into a Wells Fargo chest and we buried it somewhere in the mountains of Nevada. Oh, and did I mention we also give away metal detectors and personally signed Garrett Super Sluice gold pans with pay dirt. Now, if you want to become a premium patron too and stake your claim on all this good gold, all you gotta do is look for the little icon at the end of the video that looks something like that looks like that all you got to do is click on it make a ten dollar pledge and you're in like Flynn but you may want to hurry because with gold prices rising these nuggets are gonna go fast and I mean real fast boy all right son of boy leave me be because I got to get back to digging out more gold nuggets till then I got to put these in a safe place yeah <laughs> so until next time this is Jeff Williams and who you better know who boy saying it's too hot to be looking for that AU, sign up as a premium patron, boy, and we'll dig up those nuggets for you. Take care, everybody.